Hey guys, Tim with Perkins Roofing here. And today we're gonna to talk about flat roofs and the sloping of flat roofs. So flat roofs in modern style homes are very popular today when it comes to construction. But something that some people overlook is that flat roofs still need some sort of slope to avoid any ponding water from ending up on the roof. Ponding water can negatively affect a roofing system in multiple ways. So the definition of ponding water per Florida building code is any water that sits or ponds on a roof for more than 48 hours after a rainfall. The first way that ponding water can damage your roof is from deteriorating the membrane. And there are roofing systems that are ponding water resistant like TPO and silicone where the ponding water won't damage the roof but it will still be sitting on top of the roof. The second way that ponding water can damage a roof is it can cause structural load problems, which is not as big of a deal for concrete. Concrete can hold more weight, but for wood and metal decks, that can cause major problems. And for concrete, depending on the PSI, it may not be able to hold the load of a ton of water sitting on top of the roof. And the fear is that these heavy loads can cause roof collapses. The third main way that ponding water can cause damages to your roof is basically environmental. Uh, so you can have algae growth on the roof. It can cause tree growth from little seeds that fall into the water and then turn into a, the seed grows into a plant and the roots eat through the roofing system or also other environmental issues. I mean, I've seen like tadpoles and ecosystems built in ponding water on the roofs before. So Florida Building Code basically says with flat roofs that for a re-roof, like redoing a roof that's already pre-existing, you should have a minimum of an eighth inch slope on a flat roof. And for new construction, so complete new structures, they should be built with a quarter inch slope on the flat roofs. And there are multiple ways to get that slope. So the slope itself should be draining either off the eave of the roof, off the edge of the roof, so that the water drains from the roof itself, or it should be draining toward roof drain. So the water should be positively sloped toward drains that are on the roof. They can be field drains or at the perimeter of the roof. If you have like walls, parapet walls up on the roof, so that the water will drain either toward the drains or off the edge of the roof. And the updated code also requires all flat roofs to have a drainage calculation for commercial purposes. So if you have a commercial flat roof or industrial flat roof, and it's not just a house or a residential, you have to have engineered drainage calculations done as a part of the permit. There are a few ways that you can slope a flat roof. New construction is easier because you can pre-slope the deck of the flat roof to meet code. So if you have a concrete deck, you can pour the slab to be precast so that it is uh, sloped a certain direction toward the drains or toward the edge of the roof. And if you have a wood or metal deck, you just pre-slope the trusses so that the deck is sloped the correct way and creates positive drainage. Now, if you're re-roofing, you have to, if you don't have slope on your existing flat roof, when you re-roof, you have to install a tapered insulation system or use lightweight insulated concrete that will slope the roof toward uh, the drains or toward the edge of the roof. Now, re-sloping decks isn't easy as it sounds. There are a lot of problems that you can come across when you're trying to re-slope a roof that you don't know about until you uncover the existing roof. And it's not like you have time to go back and create new engineering drawings and make a plan. If you open the old roof up, then that means that you currently have no waterproofing down. So you can't just wait around and come up with a new plan. You have to close it back up. So when you see something like that, usually it results in a change order if you have a bowing deck or if you have uh, deficiencies in the deck underneath the old roof. So bowing in the deck is when a truss, instead of being straight and level, kind of is sunken in in the middle. That's usually a result of rotted or damaged wood. Voids and cracks in the deck would be if you have a concrete deck. So the cracks in the deck are just a result of excess moisture penetrating and it causes separation in the concrete or also expansion and contraction of the joints. And uh, voids are often caused by similar issues. So void might be a dip in the deck. Maybe it was originally poured incorrectly or it didn't set correctly on the original pour. Or uh, it's just an issue of maybe uh, too much water getting through and causing spalling of the concrete. 
and deflections in the deck can occur for a variety of structural reasons. Um, some of the most common ones are just from shifting of the ground, especially here in Florida with buildings that are built near or on the beach. The sands and the grounds are shifting due to erosion, so it causes the building to, instead of standing upright, it kind of does this, where it pulls on one side, like the Leaning Tower of Pisa. One thing that gets a little tricky is if you have adjoining roof decks. A lot of residential homes have a tile or a metal or a shingle roof that's sloped, and then on the back, they have like a Florida room or something with a flat roof on it. So you have an adjoining deck where the sloped roof meets the flat roof. Now, a lot of the times, if you have a three on 12 sloped roof, it's a very slight slope and you don't have enough room to add the insulation on the flat roof. Otherwise, you're gonna create a problem where you're gonna be burying your sloped roof into the insulation. So sometimes when you have these situations, even though code might call for a sloped deck, you can't always put it. And we just have to hope that the deck is pre-sloped enough to get most of the water off so that there are no ponding issues. One of the bigger problems with re-sloping roofs is the drains, because not all drains are created equal. A lot of the times the plumbing has problems or the plumbing is clogged and people don't know, especially with big condo buildings or big commercial buildings. These plumbing drains are supposed to be snaked every so often or flushed. And if they're not, then you, you can run into some major issues with the draining where the water backs up and can get underneath the roofing system. Or if there's debris, like tree debris, like behind me, look at all these trees, like palm tree debris and all that kind of stuff can get stuck in the drains and clog them up. And then if the water comes up, it's not gonna drain down the drain properly, it'll get clogged. Just like it happens in your sink when you have to use liquid plumber, if your hair gets caught in the sink or something like that, it happens on your roof drains too. So if you don't have the proper drains or if you don't have new drains, then you can run into issues even if you slope everything correctly to the drain. If the drains have problems draining the water off correctly, then it can create issues. Lastly, it's very expensive to re-slope roofs. It's not cheap. You're doing a lot of additional work. When you're re-sloping a roof and adding tapered insulation layers, it's usually not just one layer. Usually you have a base layer and then you have fill layers in the tapered insulation depending on how high it's getting. So there's a lot that goes into it and you can be double or tripling the amount of work and time that goes into the project just by adding the insulation layer, tapered insulation layer, or a lightweight concrete. A lot of lightweight concrete as well, they won't do projects that are under 50 squares. So that means that you're looking at 5,000 plus feet just to get the truck in and pay for the truck. So the expense is pretty vast when it comes to re-sloping flat roofs so much that a lot of flat roofs can be more expensive than doing uh, nice tile or metal roofs. So as you guys can see, there's nothing simple about flat roofs or sloping flat roofs, especially if you're doing it the right way. So if you enjoyed this video, if it helped you, educated you, please like it and follow us on YouTube. We really appreciate it. Thanks.